a dead language, oh. these two. Stroll the halls of Boys Latin High School in Philadelphia, and it hardly looks like a place of controversy. Neat uniforms, orderly classrooms, and of course, Habe Aaron. Latin. How do you know it's a perfect stem? A dead language oh. these students Habe bring to life. Perfect stem. Oh, but Philly native and founder David Hardy says his school's very future is at risk. This has been a fight. I'm up now, I love fight. I'm from 27th in New York. I'm right off the corner, so I know how to fight. But the fact of the matter is, children aren't being served by this fight. Whose schools? Our schools! The fight is over charter schools. Public schools are here to stay! In the middle of this fight comes the controversial new Secretary of Education. Betsy DeVos is a longtime charter school evangelist. We should have more charter schools. We should have more schools like this. We should have a multiplicity of choices. David Hardy opened Boys Latin a decade ago. As a charter school, it's funded with taxpayer money. But Hardy gets to run it largely like a private school. Shirts are tucked in. Yep. That's important to you. Yep. And the kids, they don't mind it. Of course they mind it. Teenage boys, they fight it all day. Copy it into your composition notebook. At Boys Latin, the school days are long and demanding. When you have rigor and strict rules, it builds an esprit de corps, like the Marine Corps. The Marines have been doing it for a long time. Why Latin? The biggest thing about Latin that we like is that it's hard. Admission is by lottery. 29. Any boy in Philly lucky enough to get in can come for free, like Ryan Davis. My rod is like an hour and a half. And a half. You come 90 minutes. I actually take two buses and a train. I like what I'm getting here, so it's worth it. It's worth it to senior Christian Garner, too. His mom, Ty Grays, raised him for most of his life as a single mom. What is it about Boys Latin that has impressed you the most? The structure and the discipline. Trying to give him that on my own was always tough, and I figured perfect match. Where are you going? Have you decided? Uh, yes, I have. So I'm going to Morgan State University. So I'm proud of that. So is David Hardy. He opened Boys Latin to get more black boys into college. Since the school was founded, nearly 90% of its students have gone to college. That's about twice Philly's recent public school average for black boys. Florida Institute of Technology, Penn State, Penn State, Boston University, Wesleyan, Penn, school. University of Penn, Ivy League. Ivy League. Looking at Boys Latin, you think there'd be no complaints over building more charter schools. But think again. Two years ago, David Hardy tried to open a girls' Latin, but Philly said no. Other big cities are pushing back against charter school expansion, too. And it may surprise you, given the student body at this charter school, that one of the strongest critics is the NAACP. The winners of the lottery ticket who go to select charter schools, they're doing fine. But what about their community? Former President Cornell Brooks led the NAACP last fall when it called for a national moratorium on new charter schools. Just 6% of students go to charter schools, but the numbers have tripled in 10 years. Where we've seen charter schools expand uh, explosively, we've seen less funding and support for the majority of students. Every dollar that goes to a charter school comes out of a pot that also funds traditional public schools. And critics say that this charter school explosion has left struggling public schools and their students worse off than before. Here in Philly, 24 public schools like this one shut down back in 2013 as more money and more students have gone to charter schools. What's working for David Hardy may not be working for the broader system. Helen Gim opened her own charter school in Philadelphia 10 years ago. She's now a city councilwoman and on the other side of the fight. We've created two enormous warring systems that are cannibalizing one another, um, competing for students, pitting communities against one another. That's not going to work for us. She says it's not a fair fight. Gim and other critics accuse charter schools of weeding out students who cost more to teach. There's an incentive to game the system. Deborah Gordon-Claire is the executive director of the Education Law Center in Philly. 
which looks into complaints about charter schools cherry-picking students. A family we represented, um, the mother tried to enroll her daughter, and she would call and say, my daughter has Down syndrome, and she was told up front, oh, we don't serve children with Down syndrome. Can they do that by law? That is absolutely illegal. Charter schools are public schools, and they are required to serve all children, including children with disabilities, English language learners, students in the foster care system, and yet those populations we really don't see in proportionate numbers in charter schools. Boys Latin is not accused of illegally keeping certain students out, but there are fewer kids here with special needs or living in deep poverty. And while English language learners, mostly Latino and Asian students, make up 10% of the school district, you have zero English language learners. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Yep. Not one. Not one. Why is that? Where we are in town. We met a kid that, that comes 90 minutes. He, he says he takes a bus and two trains or train two trains and a bus to get here. Not one kid who doesn't speak English shows up. They didn't show up here. Lotteries are supposed to guarantee fair enrollment. But for years, boys Latin didn't have one. Before the lottery at your school, you were interviewing parents. Interview is not a good word. Well, well, how, well, how would you describe okay, it? Okay, what, what it know? is, is we kind of told them what to expect. We have Saturday school, strict uniform, strict d discipline. It would seem as if perhaps you were trying to cherry pick your students. It could look that way. I can see where it could look that way. Is that why you stopped? I stopped because they said you had to do a lottery. Ty Grace got her son into boys Latin before the lottery was enforced. I want the best for my son. I will do whatever it takes. But well, what about the other sons in, in this neighborhood? And the, and the other daughters as well? I have to worry about my son. I cannot focus on what the next parent is doing. So if they were on a waiting list to say they couldn't get in, I'm sorry for that, but I'm not sorry for that because I hustled to make sure that my son- But is that fair? I mean is life fair? Why don't we fix the problem? Why don't we build more? Quality public education. But other parents fear more charter schools will mean more inequality. At an NAACP town hall in New York, we heard parents complain about excessive suspensions and expulsions. You come to me and say, listen, something's wrong with your son, you got to go. Brooks says that's another way charter schools cherry pick students. We can't bless a few while damning the many. What about those who say that the many have already been damned by decades of underperforming public schools in this country? If I've got a million kids in this country on waiting lists for charter schools, why wouldn't I be supporting a charter school expansion? The expansion of the good ones that are accountable and are serving the public well, great. But the expansion of charter schools that are admitting students to the front door, kicking them out the back door, no. The moratorium speaks to that. It's a ridiculous decision. The NAACP denies it, but David Hardy says the group has simply picked sides in an old fight that has nothing to do with kids. Since most charter school teachers aren't unionized, teachers unions have been some of the most vocal charter critics. You're not suggesting that the NAACP, this country's oldest civil rights organization, would side with teachers unions over black kids. I think they absolutely did. A lot of the charter schools they're complaining about in black neighborhoods have black children in them who are thriving. You want to stop that? Secretary DeVos met us at Boys Latin for her first network news interview. You go to a lot of schools like this, I would imagine. I do. She's been a polarizing figure ever since her confirmation hearing, when many thought she seemed ill-prepared to lead the education department. Criticism has followed her into the job. in education policy. Now she's pushing President Trump's budget that cuts education funding overall, but increases charter school spending by more than $150 million. So this charter school where we're sitting right now, Boys Latin, they've had some success. Critics have said that the success has come at the expense of neighborhood schools. Are, are you okay with that? Actually, I think schools like this are really great examples of schools that are meeting the needs of kids that haven't fit in elsewhere. But if there's always one pot of money, won't traditional public schools, won't they always get shortchanged to a certain extent? Great public schools are going to continue to do a great job for the students that they're serving. And I think we, instead of talking about schools and school buildings, we should be talking about 
funding students and investing in individual students. Can charter schools and traditional public schools peacefully coexist? They cannot coexist if the funding streams stay the way they are. And that's a big problem. It's simply not going to work. David Hardy is retiring from running Boys Latin. He'll be working as a charter school advocate in Philadelphia. As for Christian Garner, one of my top three choices, he's leaving home soon. Following the path to college, he mapped out on his bedroom wall. When you look at that wall, what do you think? Yeah, I do have a lot of goals and I know that I'm going places. 